am a little late on this review, but what can I say? I like to savor. You know what I don't do? Jump, 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 jump. You gotta sip it, you gotta enjoy it. Guess that excuse would've worked for the first couple weeks, maybe not the next couple weeks. Point is, I wanna talk about Spider-Man on PS4 now, so let's do it. <laughs> Spider-Man on PS4. Guess I don't have to say that, of course it would be on PS4, but it's not Amazing Spider-Man, not Spectacular Spider-Man, not Superior Spider-Man, it's just, it's just Spider-Man. Forewarning you, when I start talking about the plot, there'll be some spoilers, you've been warned. So Spider-Man came out on PS4, it's completely crushed. Everyone I knew was playing it, everyone who gamed online was playing it. I was playing it because the game's completely addicting. It more or less follows the gameplay of the Arkham games, but for Spider-Man, you know how any game that emulates Metroid or Castlevania is known as Metroidvania, it's its own format? I feel like for open world action games, Arkham is going to be that. This is an open world Arkham style Spider-Man. Spider-Man game in Manhattan. You swing around Manhattan, you find little pockets of crime, you go deal with that, you find some side challenges, you have your main story arc, maybe some surprise Spidey villain cameos or characters that you might not have expected in here. And how in Arkham you get more Batman tech, in this one you get more Spider-Man tech, you get more web shooter abilities, unlock abilities just like in Arkham, unlock combos just like in Arkham. There is a learning curve. There are a lot of combos, a lot of abilities that you can link together. There's a lot of moves, a lot of possibilities you have to do as Spider-Man. First couple of groups you fight, you're like, this game is hard. But as the game progresses, you get better at it, you become a badass. You start taking out these hives, these bases of baddies with challenges that give you more points. The biggest learning curve in this game for me was the counter mechanic. Same counter mechanic as in Arkham, only in Arkham, the triangle button was the one that countered on the PlayStation. In this game, it's circle. So for the longest time, I was pushing triangle out of habit because it's, it's just years of muscle memory with Arkham games that just you have to unlearn. There are a lot of suits to unlock in Spider-Man. Also, I thought that was a great bit of fan service. Not gonna lie, I unlocked Ben Riley's suit. I had that for a lot of the game because I don't even even give a shit. I like Ben Riley. I like Scarlet Spider. He's awesome. But not only that, you have the classic suit, Spider-Man Homecoming suit, the new suit for this game. A lot of suits. I am a bit disappointed that the symbiote suit, the black suit, it's not part of it. It's not in this game. That would have been a really nice bit of fan service that just isn't here. Why? But every costume you unlock gives a costume ability. And for me, the most advantageous one was the first one I started with. The one that refills your special meter. Your special meter allows you to instantly take out guys or refill your life. That's just the best one. But comment below. Well, let me know which one was best for you. The story's great too. This isn't Spider-Man year one, like Spider-Man Homecoming. This Peter Parker, this Spider-Man, he's been at it for about eight years now. So he's a bit of a veteran. He's been at this for a while. He has a system down. I really like sizing this Peter Parker up at the Tom Holland Peter Parker and being like, yeah, this is years of experience between the two. This game goes through a series of villains. At first you take out Wilson Fisk, then you have Mr. Negative. I don't know who Mr. Negative is. He's relatively a new villain in the Spider-Man world. Relatively, I think he came out in like 2007 or something like that. I just didn't really know much about him. I was like, all right, all right, well, I'm taking on this villain I don't know much about, but the gameplay is great. I'm not attached to the villain, but fine. Mr. Negative is a guy who will be like, Ha, Spider-Man, I'm Mr. Negative. I'll take you out with my powers. What are my powers? Simple. I make shadows that I hit you with, and I make shadow bombs, and I make shadow monsters and shadow animals that are really big. Sometimes I invade your mind and give you nightmares like Scarecrow from Arkham. Gets a little confusing, really, but yeah, sure. Um, but screw them when I was born, and screw you too. Do I look like an old man because of the negative white beard? Do I look like Malcolm McDowell? Now you can't have any of my pot pie. But that's Mr. Negative. What are his powers, really? He makes energy, he makes shadows, he invades your mind and gives you nightmares. He can control minds, he, he seems to be able to do a lot. Sometimes it felt like Kitty Pride in X-Men Days of Future Past, where it's like, I can walk through walls. Also, I can send you through time. I don't know how one feeds into the other, I just don't. But that's going on the first time I ever saw Mr. Negative was this game. 90 Spider-Man fan, like I said. But really the meat of the emotion is the Doc Ock storyline. I thought forever I would always size up any Doc Ock to the Alfred Molina Doc Ock. This Otto Octavius in this game is the quintessential Doc Ock. It's a touching story of someone's decline, someone's fall. At a point you're like, am I gonna see Dr. Octopus in here? Cause we're kind of getting to the end of the Mr. Negative storyline. Oh my God, it's a Sinister Six game. It just really shows how Octavius is brilliant. That's his power. And he has the four arms because his limbs are giving out on him. He has, I don't know what he has. Degenerative disease of some kind. And anyhow, his muscles are giving out. So that's why he developed the octopus arms, why he relies on him, why he's so attached to him. But it's a really sad touching story of Peter Parker's friend and boss just falling. Now I feel like we can never have Doc Ock in the new Spider-Man movies because I would always compare that Doc Ock to this Doc Ock. Now the Sinister Six, they don't have huge storylines in there. He just kind of releases them and then you got to fight them in the form of boss fights. Goes by pretty fast, honestly, if you're just doing the storyline. There are enough side quests to keep you busy in between. Some of the bases of enemies that you have to take out are harder than some of the Sinister Six bosses. And this is where in terms of story, 
games have the upper hand over movies. If a Spider-Man movie had this many bosses and this many characters, I'd be standing here going, ah, too many characters on screen. It felt really cramped in here, but a game can draw it out. A game can have one plot of bosses lead into the other, lead into the next. An open world video game like this is a prime format for telling a comic book story. And we have ourselves some Miles Morales backstory. Like we don't get the backstory to Peter Parker, Spider-Man, because we know what we've seen it. We all, uh, we know. But Miles Morales, you get his story. And here's my confession about Miles Morales. Was never really attached to the dude. Best phrase is I, I never cared about Miles Morales. Not that I disliked Miles Morales. It's just kind of nothing to him. It's kind of like the Flash. I know a dude who's like Wally West was my Flash, not Barry Allen. Peter Parker was my Spider-Man, not Miles Morales. I think it's great people have a new Spider-Man. But this game makes me attached to Miles Morales. Like if this is your introduction to Miles Morales, which for all intents and purposes is mine, he's awesome. He's quite a good character. I'm glad I saw his origin story. And I also cherry on top, love the fact that J. Jonah Jameson is just talking in your ear with his Spider-Man slander on the radio. It was great hearing the nonsense he would spat out. It was great having Jonah Jameson in here. It's the only way they really could. You never go to the Daily Bugle. So this game missing Jonah Jameson, it would be missing something special. Guys, in the end, this Spider-Man game, I love it. I don't want to call it the quintessential Spider-Man experience, but it very well might be that. I had never in any game felt so like Spider-Man before. The gameplay is rock solid. The missions are fun. Some of the missions are really frustrating. Lucky you don't have to get golds on all of the challenges in the game to get the platinum trophy for the game. I have a platinum in this game. One of the few games I have a platinum in, not saying that to boast that I have a platinum, but saying that to illustrate the trophies, the platinum, it's challenging, but it's not ball numbingly impossible. That's how trophies I feel should be. That's how it was in Doom, that's how it is in Spider-Man, and I appreciate that. Whether you're playing through the storyline, doing the side missions, or just going through the streets, just swinging through the buildings, looking for crime to stop. This game is gold, man. Like, I loaned it to my brother so we could play it. I'm already going through withdrawal. This game is set up for a sequel. I want to see where they go. This could be the next Arkham trilogy, but with Spider-Man. Spider-Man! is awesome-tacular. <laughs>Why is it not actually that great? It has a cool label though. Perfect for a prop. Thank you for being patient. I know I'm not the quickest person to review games, but priority one, take your time and enjoy the game. And so I did. Hopefully you do too. All right, so Spider-Man on PS4, have you played it? What did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you wanna see more, click right here to see more. <laughs>